Hello everyone and welcome to the Quampedia Explains Trading Strategies video series. Today we will discuss how to build Forex mean reversion strategies. Hello everyone, my name is Radar with QMC and head of research at Quampedia. Today we will touch the subject of uh, reversal strategies. Uh, reversal strategies are quite common in our database. We have more than 100 of them. I mean, they are common in all of the asset classes, so you can have a reversal strategy in commodities, in stocks, in forex or cryptocurrencies. Today I would like to touch reversal strategy in uh, forex or currencies, because that's one of the most common asset class in which those strategies are used. So we have an article called uh, How to Build Mean Reversion Strategy in currencies, which was written probably a month ago, and we are exploring how to take a subset of FX pairs and how we can build a mineration strategy out of them. So we are using the FX futures, we are not using the FX spot for this uh, analysis. The reason why we use the FX future is because the FX futures incorporate the interest rate differential between the currencies, so we do not need to use the spot and then uh, calculate what are the swap rates and I mean to calculate the swaps, etc, etc, or I mean add the swaps into the spot price series. So we can use the FX futures continuous data series in case it's uh, correctly rolled and I mean regarding that we have an article called continuous futures contract methodology for backtesting in that article is written how to correctly roll the futures to include the rolling cost which is interest rate differential in the case of FX futures this article is also useful when you do the commodity trading because I mean it will include the roll yield into the backtesting data series etc etc so if you trade futures I recommend you to go to the article but I mean at the moment we are discussing the currencies as a once again what is the advantage is that we do not need to use the swaps or the swap points or swap rates. We have performance included interest rate differential. But that's our data set and here we have a performance of individual pairs against the US dollar. So we use the six main pairs. We use the Austrian dollar against the US, British pound against the US, Canadian dollar against the US, Euro, Swiss franc and Japanese yen. So I mean the main and most common FX futures or common pairs. As you can see, this is the performance. The FX market is known that it never moves a lot in the one direction. The FX market is really, really mean reverting. So I mean, we can build the mean reverting strategies there very well. We touched already the mean reversion in two of our articles. So what's the relation between grid trading and delta hedging and the primer on grid trading strategy. If you're interested in grid trading, you can also review the video. So we have a video about that. It's probably one year or one and a half year old but you can find it on the YouTube. But right now we are not discussing grid trading. I mean grid trading is the strategy that trades more often. So we are trying to build a strategy that's uh, not so active. The idea is take a look on the performance of the individual pairs and then the US dollar and to buy of course those that are far away from the average performance and short those that are far high over the average uh, performance. We are trying to buy the currencies that are cheap and we are trying to sell the currencies that are dear or expensive. Of course, we are trying to make the money because we expect that in the long term, the currencies will revert back to the average. So that's the reason why it's called the reversal strategy. Now we can use two types of the sizing. We can use the linear position sizing and exponential position sizing. So what is the linear? So let's imagine that we will enter the position. So we will short the currency which is far away and we will buy the currency which is cheap compared to the other currencies. And the price of the currency goes against us. When you are building the mini reversion strategy, strategy. In this case, you should double down. You need to have a really proper risk management technique in this case, because I mean, in this case, you can get very fast into the problem. But as the market is mean reverting, you can double down so you can buy more currencies if the currency price is going down or you can sell more currencies if the currency price is going back up because I mean, the currencies tend to mean revert. The question is how much you should buy in case the currency goes against you. And in this case, you can do the linear position sizing. In this case, if the continuous futures series of the currency is 20% higher, then we go short 20 percent of the currency and if it's 40 percent higher then we go a short 40 percent of the currency if it's 20 percent lower we go 20 percent long if it's 40 percent lower compared to the average price we go 40 percent long that's linear position sizing so as far away as you are from the average determines what is your position size but there is also the exponential position sizing so in the exponential position sizing you double down so if the individual future is 20 percent higher you allocate 40 percent of the currency to the short position but if the individual continuous future is 30 percent higher then you allocate 90% of the currencies to the short. And if it's 40% higher, you allocate 160% weight. So, I mean, you are using the futures or if you're trading the spot, you can use the leverage from your broker. Your leverage can go up a lot. But I mean, of course, in this case, there is a risk of uncontrolled leverage growth when we are using the exponential policy sizing. So we need to keep our risk management strict. But I mean, if it applied correctly, it's manageable. It is not overly dangerous. So here we have what is the total position size 
when we use the linear and when we use exponential sizing. So when we use the linear, we do not have more than 100%. So we just have the, our nominal in total invested, whether it's long or short position. When we use the exponential, our maximum leverage goes up to 4 to 1, so 400%, which is, I mean, in a currency, it's not so much. You can trade up to 100 leverage. So, I mean, 4 to 1 is like not very risky position. And what is the performance? So why is the exponential position sizing used? I mean, you can use the linear. The exponential is used because that's the only way how you can earn money in the Forex. When you use just the linear sizing, you will not earn a lot of money. Currencies do not move a lot or move a lot. One of the ways how to earn money in the currencies is that you leverage uh, your position and you leverage your position in an exponential way. Of course, you need to have some stop loss, you need to have a drop risk management, you need to calculate, I mean, how much do you expect to lose in case there is some negative movement and I mean, what will be your total position or what will be your total leverage. So in our case, the total leverage was around 4 to 1. And I mean, what the exponential sizing allows you to do is that it allows you to earn money from the relative positions of the currencies. Strategy is relevant on a monthly basis. It's very simple strategy. So every uh, once in a month, you compare what is the performance of the individual currencies against the average and you go long those that are very under the average line and you short those that are very expensive or that are very high compared to the average line. And you size your position exponentially. So, I mean, the far away the currency is from the average, the higher position you have. And you bet that there will be a mean reversion and there is a mean reversion in currencies. So, exponential uh, strategy has a performance around 3% with a sharp ratio around 0.35. So, there are not high numbers, but you can uh, combine this strategy with the other strategies, etc. Et and of course, you can use a higher leverage. So, we have maximum leverage 4 to 1, which is quite conservative in this space. So, the maximum drawdown over the last 17 or 18 years was minus 14%, which is, I mean, really minimal. So if you want to increase the performance, you can increase the leverage or you can change how the exponential is calculated in this case. So you can lever more if you are far away from the average and you can omit the leverage at all when you are very close to the average, etc. etc. This is how the strategy looks like. As I mentioned before, there are a lot of the other reversal strategies. I mean, there is a short-term reversal effect in the stocks, you have a short-term reversal effect in the commodities, in the cryptocurrencies, etc. etc. So this was mainly about the currency trading. I mean, what is the main advantage of the currency trading is that really you can uh, set up the leverage the way you want and so you can take up as many risks as you want or as low risk as you want so that's the advantage of forex strategies i hope that you like this introduction into reversal trading in case you liked uh, it uh, please give us the like subscribe to our channel the link to the article is in the video feel free to review performance feel free to view our other articles and if you're interested in this kind of the trading i mean do not forget to take a look on the great trading strategies also thank you very much and i hope that you will join me in the next video are you interested? Then pick another video to learn more, or subscribe to Quantpedia Pro and try how our analytics and reporting significantly save time spent on quantitative research.